Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this talk about dried blood spot analysis of phosphatidyl ethanol, which is a novel alcohol biomarker. So let's jump right into it. Phosphatidyl ethanol, short PETH, um, can be used for the detection of chronic alcohol abuse, as it stays up to 28 days within the, uh, the blood flow after consumption. The half-life time of PETH is 3 to 12 days. And it is located within the um, membrane of the red blood cells. For the analysis, we distinguish between up to 48 different path homologues, which can be found. But the um, two 16O, 18.1 and 18.2 are the most abundant homologues within the human blood and the focus on the analysis. So if we take a look at the general detection of alcohol, we um, see that very short term after drinking, breath analysis is the gold standard, which is then followed up or confirmed with ETG or ETS analysis from the urine. However, the ETG, ETS is only detectable up to 130 hours after consumption. Long term biomarkers are GGT or CDT. However, especially CDT is an indirect biomarker and you need to drink a lot of alcohol to be positive on CDT. A novel marker is PETH, which is a, is a direct biomarker and um, stays up to 28 days in the bloodstream after consumption. However, PETH is only stable on dry blood spots. So, Let's go into the analysis process. We, uh, we need to use the matrix blood as it is within the red blood cells. However, in the liquid blood sample, uh, here shown as an EDTA tube, we need to store it at minus 80 degrees Celsius to stop the enzyme activity to avoid post-sampling degradation of the path. Also, this uh, requires quite tedious lab processes especially in regard of keeping the sample at minus 80 degree Celsius throughout the process, which makes it very expensive. On the other hand, dried blood spot analysis uh, only requires a few droplets of blood put on a filter paper card. And here the path is stable for several months as the enzyme activity is stopped immediately after the blood is applied on the filter paper card and is dried. The sample collection is quite easy. So an at-home sampling or a sampling by the patient, him or herself is possible. As soon as the blood is dried, we don't need to label it as biohazard liquid anymore. And we can ship the samples by standard mail, which makes it quite cheap for transportation and storage. And within the laboratory, we have fully automated processes to do the analysis. So dry blood spot analysis is nothing new. The first routine application goes back to 1962, where they punched out discs and then transferred them into a, a vial for the extraction. So we took this process and automated the whole workflow. So instead of punching these discs, we directly elude from the filter paper card into the um, LCMS instrumentation or into a um, 96 well plate or a vial. The DBS MS500 instrument, which you can see in the bottom left of the picture, has three modules. First, there is a camera where we scan the barcode and the, um, the shape and location of the dry blood spot. Then we can apply internal standards directly on the dry blood spot, which allows us to do quantification as we can nullify for the hematocrit based uh, recovery bias. And then we directly elude from the filter paper into the LCMS instrumentation in this case. We can load up to 500 DBS cards into the instrumentation, which are then handled in a fully automated fashion. So the main difference between punching and this, this direct dilution is that we have activated extraction. So we have always fresh solvent hitting the sample and we end up with only 
about 20 microliter of a very concentrated extract within less than a minute per sample. So let's take a look at the, um, the method. We achieved to baseline separate the two homologues 18.1 and 18.2 and we also incorporated the uh, D5 internal standard into the analysis process. One of them has, uh, was prepared directly in our lab and the other one was, was buy it from a commercial supplier. I will get into details uh, regarding the internal standards a few slides afterwards. Then we, we validated a range which uh, was of interest here for this application. We also added QCs and we ended up with a runtime of five minutes per sample, seven minutes with the extraction. But as the processes are, um, are running in parallel, we only need seven minutes for the first sample and then afterwards each sample takes five minutes. So let's take a look at the, um, the scheme. So up here, the dry blood spot card is, is placed into this extraction cell and we pump extraction solvent through the dry blood spot onto a trapping column. This trapping column is then back flushed by an additional pump onto our analytical column and then goes into the LCMS, uh, the MS, the mass spec instrument for detection. So the method fulfilled all uh, required criteria in regard to uh, linearity, limit of quantification as 20 nanogram per ml is the cutoff in Europe. We didn't go lower, but uh, with modern instrumentation, there's no problem to go lower. The, um, and the other parameters are met as well. So we compared the now fully automated dry blood spot analysis with the manual approach where we took manual whole blood and prepared it uh, with, um, in a vial with the whole process. And we see that uh, we get very good correlation between the two methods. Also, we compared the manual dry blood spot approach where we punch out the disc with the fully automated approach. In the manual side, we, we did the volumetric sampling and we cut out the whole spot and what we see also in this case we have very good uh, correlation however this was not the case when we first started doing this and we had to learn that we need to increase the extraction duration of on the on the manual side to up to four hours to get comparable results so here it, it really needs some extraction force to bring out the path from the red blood cells into the uh, solution. So we performed a study with 28 subjects from uh, alcohol withdrawal therapy. Subject six here, the first graph, we see that um, he or she started with a very high value and then it decreased during the therapy to, um, to a minimum. So here a very positive uh, result from the therapy and it can be monitored directly by using the path values. Another example would be subject 8 where we can see a relapse after 32 days. Both the short-term alcohol markers ETG and ETS go up and the uh, path as well. So here we have a confirmation with the new method. Now it gets interesting at subject 4. He or she had several relapses after day 42 and when we compare the, the dotted line from the ETG ETS with the solid line from the path, we see that at three time points the ETG or ETS value would be negative. So we have a false negative result here and this is due to the short half-life time of ETG ETS. So if, you, if the subject stays sober for just um, a few days, we get a negative value. However, with the path, we really see an accumulation within the blood and we can really deduce the, the whole drinking behavior from these results. 
So in Europe, it has been suggested that the, uh, the level for abstinence is below 20 nanogram per ml, between 20 and 150 or sometimes 200, depending on the source. Uh, it is, uh, we have a moderate consumption and above 150 nanogram or 200, um, we have a positive subject. This has to be defined by each lab itself nowadays, but I'm sure that there will be standardization in the near future. So just a few details for the, uh, the analytical methods. We compared several labs during path analysis and we got quite different results. And the source for this was the, uh, the usage of different reference material. So within the reference material, we have variation in the attachment position of the fatty acid uh, chain onto the uh, polar head group. So we distinguish here between 16O, 18.1 or 18.1, 16O. So naturally, we have a um, predominant case of 16O, 18.1. And this really has an effect on the uh, fragmentation pattern and therefore it affects the, the analysis. So the reference material should be as, as similar as possible to what we see in authentic blood samples. So this has been studied and published very recently in the, uh, the source you can see here below in the page. Then another thing we are working at here at the Comac DBS laboratory is the implementation of a automated hematocrit correction tool. So we uh, launched this month a new module which is a uh, optical hematocrit detection module where we scan at a certain wavelength uh, optical signal from the dry blood spot and correlate this with the, the hematocrit. The nice thing here is that it's age independent from the DBS samples and it's very robust in terms of uh, humidity, different filter paper, etc. So in the graph we see that the, um, the uncorrected measurement of PETH in between 20 and 70% hematocrit has quite a hematocrit based bias. But if we apply a correction algorithm from this automated hematocrit detection module, we can really then get this into control between 30 and 70% and really go towards quantitative DBS analysis from non-volumetric samples. So to shortly summarize, we took a well-established technology from the field of newborn screening and put this into new markets, especially the field of phosphatidyl ethanol analysis. We have a significant process cost reduction through the use of dry blood spot by uh, easy sample collection, low cost shipping and transportation, fully automated laboratory processes through the usage of the DBS MS500 instrumentation and a minimum use of solvents. There's only 20 microliter for extraction and a few microliter for rinsing. Through the high degree of automation, we see a very low degree of error and go towards good laboratory practices, GLP. And with this, I would like to close this presentation. Special thanks to Dr. Mark Luckenbühl, who is one of the leading scientists in the field of PATH analysis, then Professor Weinmann from the University of Bern and Dr. Young from the Queensland University in Australia. And thanks to you for listening.